Hey folks, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and we've got another knife, as you saw from the intro, well, as you saw from the thumbnail, another knife by Rake Knives. This is the P831-S-S, dash, it's a dash, P831-SF, P831-SF, <laughs> and, oh, wow, wow. But don't click buy quite yet. First, take a look at the rest of this review. Coming at you right now. If when you're partway through watching this video, you like this knife, but you're not liking the uh, one issue that I'm going to be talking about, do keep watching to the end. Watch right to the end because I have a little fix that has made it absolutely awesome. And I've already done the fix to uh, this here. This is after I'd recorded everything. So it's a fix that is, you know, you can't really see that it's there, but it's a fix that makes a world of difference to this knife. I have been a knife guy for a very long time. I have been a rake guy since I first held my very first rake knife. <laughs> this knife knocks my socks off. It really, really does. It is awesome. It's uh, one of their smaller folders. It's uh, plenty big enough. It's over three inches on your blade here. Um, plenty over, so it's not like it's close. So uh, if you're living in a jurisdiction where you've got the law of a three inch blade or shorter. Sorry about that. This knife is not for you unless you wanted to uh, mill it down, <laughs> take the tip off of that knife. <laughs> It'll leave it exactly the same way, but just take it back a little bit. What do we have? We've got a full flat grind, a sheep's foot blade. Some people would be tempted to call it a Warncliffe. Technically a Warncliffe needs a flat blade and this knife does have a bit of a belly. So technically it's a sheep's foot I totally understand if people are going to call it a Warncliffe because it really looks like a Warncliffe. And some people don't follow that technical uh, aspect of needing to have a full flat edge. Very, very close to a flat edge here anyways. So we've got a nice blade here, a really nice plunge here that comes all the way back right close to the handle here. The thumb stud is well out of the way, full flat grind, bead blasted blade. This is a slicing machine in large part thanks to the cutting edge being quite thin behind the grind. 14C28N Sandvik steel. You put all of that together and you have maybe the best knife of its size in this price range that I've ever held. Maybe. Keep watching. Let's get on to the, oh, the thumb stud is one of those blue anodized little, um, what am I going to call those? <laughs> um, honey bee hive kind of, honey bee hive kind of shapes. I'll give you a close up shot of that so you can see that. And let's get back to the handle now. The handle is a uh, 3C14N stainless steel. So it's a nice stainless steel. Also bead, bleed, bead blast finish. You've got like four steps up on each side. So the chamfering is like stepped down on both sides like that. Just a nice little gentle curve back. So it fits in the palm of the hand quite well, but it's not super aggressive with that curve. And the other side, it's got the same thing. You've got the pocket clip on this side. They've got sort of an odd shape for the uh, cutout for the pocket clip. And that's why this one screw that is, you know, has a larger uh, flat landing spot. That's I'm calling that the landing spot. It's not the technical word for it. But the interface between the screw head and the pocket clip you know, that covers a good big surface area. So one screw is just fine for there it, because of the way they made it. Generally, I want pocket clips to have two screws or more. This one is just fine because of, you know, the extra steps that they took of, you know, designing sort of a keyhole shape that it can only go that one way and just 
there's no freedom for it to wiggle or anything at all. Very, very well-made pocket clip. Uh, nice and small. It uh, goes in and out of the pocket very well. It holds very well. And when it goes to showing out of the pocket, because the knife is getting narrow here, it doesn't show an awful lot, even though you've got, you know, about two centimeters there. I'll do the rest of the specs in a little while. Lanyard hole is in the perfect place. And it's cut back a little bit so that uh, when you tie some lanyard around here, it doesn't stick out further than the face of the blade of the handle of the knife, I should say. So that's a good thing. And I'll give you, you know, a good little close up shot of how that looks as well. You've got this lock system. You've heard me say it on other videos. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not super against it either because it's got a nice strong detent. So if you don't want to use it, you can just ignore it. And so I just choose to ignore it. I don't use that locking system. Uh, the locking system comes out on the outside of the frame lock arm. It keeps you from disengaging the frame lock to close the blade. Uh, but having a frame lock already is plenty lock enough on a knife for, in my opinion. It fits very well in my hand. My hand is large, bordering on extra large. And this is the smallest knife that I am comfortable with. And I am comfortable with this knife. It, it's it's the smallest in terms of all the dimensions. And I'll talk about the dimensions in just a minute. And sometimes you do want you know to carry the smallest knife that you can comfortably carry. This can be easily used as a gentleman's knife, uh, partly because of the dimensions. It's thin, it's light, and you know it's a good size. And it looks like a gentleman's styling as well. So that's a good thing. Open pillar construction. We've got those hourglass sha shaped. I just, I don't know why the words just don't want to come out today. Hourglass shaped uh, pillars here. So that's really nice. Uh, let me take it apart and show you the inside about uh, where they've milled out the back of this uh, knife handle so that it can be nice and light. And you can see what we've got in the pivot as well. Okay, so you saw that we've got washers in there. We've got these um, sort of Teflon, the, the black washers, and then that thin phosphor bronze washer works just fine for this knife. It's It deploys very comfortably, really good action in terms of how well it slides. No blade play back and forth, up and down. You know, lockup is totally solid. I'll show you, I'll zoom into that and I'll show you a picture of the lockup there. just great. The uh, stop pin is a good enough size for this size knife. Perfect, if you ask me. And uh, you did see the inside picture of the mechanism that holds this Beta Plus lock. Uh, you know, and that's neither here nor there, as in my way of thinking. Okay, let's do the dimensions now. We'll zoom in the camera just a little bit. The uh, cutting edge and the blade length are identical. 8.5 centimeters, 3.35 inches, so three and a third inches. The blade thickness, it's just over three millimeters, 3.1 millimeters, that's 0.12 inches. Good thickness of the blade, and it starts tapering down right about there, and it slowly keeps getting thinner until it gets to the tip. I think that the tip is not the strongest tip of any knife by Rake Knives, but it's uh, strong enough there. I, I don't use my knives as a pry tool anyways, and hopefully you don't either. And uh, if you don't use it that way, this tip is plenty strong enough. The blade depth, that's the spine to the belly, and that's right here at the beginning of it, close to the pivot. 2.4 centimeters, 0.95 inches, so almost an inch in this dimension. Now let's talk about the thickness behind the grind. That is the dimension that is, it knocked my socks off. I knew it was nice and thin when I, you know, just felt it with my naked hands. And when I was cutting 0.38 millimeters, that's 0 0.015 inches behind the grind. So that's how thick the steel is just after that final bevel to get to the tip. And very, very good. This, um, 
14C28N stainless steel can handle that. Rockwell hardness of this is around 59. Or they say 58 to 60, so I'll just say 59. So it can handle being that thin. It hasn't, uh, I've got a whole bunch of knives now with 14C28N by Rake, by, uh, uh, Real Steel Knives as well, and by some other manufacturers. And it's a good steel. It can handle being thin behind the grind. Very, very, very nice knife. Let's do the handle sizes. The handle length is 11 centimeters, 4.33 inches. So almost exactly an inch longer in the handle than we have on the blade. Very good proportions. The uh, grip area, and for the grip area, I measured uh, between my two thumbnails all the way back to here. That is 10.1 centimeters, 4 inches. The handle thickness, uh, and so I didn't count the pocket clip or the raised section by this Beta Plus lock. Just how thick is it like that right there? 0.9 centimeters. That's 0.35 inches. Nice and thin. Great for in a pocket uh, if you're wearing dress pants or something and you just want to be more discreet with a knife. Very, very good. Uh, the handle depth, that's this dimension, 2.2 centimeters. That's 0.87 inches. So just a little bit less this way than the blade is. It's because the blade comes back a little bit. So very nice knife in terms of sizes. Oh, the final, the full dimension when it's open, 19.5 centimeters, 7.68 inches. So almost, well, that's basically seven and two thirds of an inch, um, almost 20 centimeters. It weighs 93 grams, 3.28 ounces. So not even three and a third ounces for this knife. So you've got, you know, three and a third inches for three and a third ounces. So very, very good size per weight ratios there. Love this knife and it cuts so very, very well. Now it is because you've got, you know, this nice thinness here, a thinner knife uh, in the handle is sometimes less comfortable when you're cutting, especially if you're going to be doing something hard for a long time. So it can get a little hot on the, the, uh, the, the belly side of the handle uh, when you're holding it for a while and doing a lot of cutting. It's not bad though. It, it feels quite nice in the hand. There's no jimping anywhere for you to notice. That's a, often a very good thing. There's no thumb riser here at all. It's just smooth across. So this is not a heavy duty knife, although for a short stint, it can do some hard work. Uh, it's just not a knife that you want to do hard work with for a long time. This is a nice discreet carry gentleman style folder. In a lot of ways, it's a gentleman style folder that I really, really like. You know, it sort of has that semi kind of tactical kind of look with having that, the blade, the way it's shaped. But no, I don't, it's not a tactical knife. Unique features. Um, there's nothing super unique. You got a nice ring there with that anodized blue accent right there that helps set it off. It is a right-handed knife only. That's one of the cons I want to talk about. This is not a left-handed knife in any way, shape, or form. There's no left side for the thumb stud. You can't close the knife if you put the thumb stud in that way because it would need it bump into the frame lock arm right here. So a pocket clip is right hand only. There's no place to put it on the left side. So yeah, it's a right hander knife. That's one of the limitations of it. So the pros, it's nice and light, really good design. Um, its weight is excellent. I don't mind the bead blast. I really like it. Um, a satin kind of grind where you can see the grind lines would be really nice, but this bead blast between the handle and the blade really helps keep it in that sort of discreet gentleman's kind of look. That's a good thing. As I said before, it is an awesome slicer. I still have the factory edge on here. That's why you can see those uh, grind lines on there. Uh, until it needs to be sharpened, I'll just uh, strop it. And uh, then it'll get that really nice fine edge on there. Almost a mirror grind the way I sharpen my knives. Great lanyard placement. That's awesome. The um, handle's quite comfortable. Uh, one con here is I wish this cutout was coming back a little bit further right here for your thumb stud or that the thumb stud was larger. And why is that? Because of my con. 
I hate, and that's not an understatement, I hate deployment of this knife. <laughs> the odd time, if I get my hand just right, I can flick it open. There we go. Let's make a wider view of this. Usually, when I go to open this knife, hey, I got it really good that time. And I'm not faking it here. I'm really honestly trying. See, sometimes I can get it open. Most of the time, I end up, you know, I'm trying really hard to keep my fingers away from the frame lock so I don't put any pressure on it. Because if you do that, you're not going to be able to open it. <sighs> but, you know, I can work my thumb sore trying to open it. It's, they just messed up. Um, I've heard some other people complain about this thumb stud. Um, if you watch Kevin Cleary's video, uh, he reviewed this knife quite a while back. And um, I watched that video when it first came out. And his unboxing video, you know, he mentioned that it was a great flipper open. He could do it really well. He made a minor comment in there that sometimes it's a bit difficult uh, to get the fat of your thumb behind there to get it open. Um, but, you know, not a big deal. And uh, in the review video, he talks about it in a little more detail that it's a little bit of a problem. Uh, I think it's a major, major problem. And um, I love this knife so much that can you guess what I'm going to do? I'm cutting this out here. I'm going to make this a bigger hole in here. And um, I'm not going to show it to you in this video. I'll show you pictures of what I've done later on. I would like a larger thumb stud. That would help out an awful lot. If the thumb stud was larger, that might take care of it. When you get just the right thickness, your thumb behind there just right, it flips open very, very well. Like I said before, it's a great knife. The pivot's awesome. It's just getting that behind there. It just doesn't work all the time. So now let me show you the fix that I did. I ended up not milling out anything over here. Didn't change the handle one iota. All I did was I unscrewed the thumb stud. I used my VC3 thread locking material that I've got from Vibratite. And it's their, their key product. It's a thread locking material that allows you to reuse the threads, um, reuse it, you know, six or seven times you can take the thing in and back out. It's not super strong, so it's not gonna be locked in there permanently, but it's strong enough to hold it most definitely for something this size. It's an awesome material. I have another video about that. I'll put a link to that video at the end. But all I did was, and I'll show you a close up of this, this thing is just standing out just a hair. And now I've made that adjustment and the knife blade just flies open. Easy squeezy every single time. No problem at all. So all they needed to do, if they do another run of this, I hope they put on just a larger thumb stud and that will make this knife awesome for everybody. Back to some more pros. Uh, this knife is comfortable in any kind of grip that you want to hold it. Um, you know, pinch grip, the regular fist, thumb behind here, uh, hammer grip, any, any, almost any grip, it's quite comfortable. It's not super comfortable because of, you know, it's thinness again, but quite comfortable. Uh, this you know, the uh, chamfer with the steps on here help give it traction in your hands so that it's not slippery. Um, although if you were to stab into something, uh, there's very little to stop your hand from going forward. You know, if you came to a sudden abrupt stop, um, you know, into something, pretend my hand is a piece of wood or something. If it stops suddenly, your hand might come over like that. Uh, but that's just part of its design. Not Not a big deal. Technically, it's not a sharpener's toil, but the way they cut this out here, it works great for sharpening the knife. Looks great. Um, if this thumb stud and hole here deployment was working better, 
this thing would get an 11 out of 10. I, I know I don't give numbers on my reviews, but this would be easily my favorite knife that I've reviewed in a very long time if the deployment was better. But I am loving this knife. It is awesome. And if you want to buy one of these knives or any other rake knife, and I think they've got some newer models coming out soon, you know, check out their website, rakeknives.ca. And um, they ship to the United States and to Canada. So if you're an American and you're looking for a rake knife, um, you know, I would really appreciate it if you would uh, buy it from the company that is helping me out to do the reviews. Okay, so I've got some of that thicker sizal rope, and uh, let's see how well this stuff cuts. Quite good. I didn't want to wiggle it too much. I wanted the edge to work its way through. Not bad at all. Uh, this stuff's not easy to cut, and I think it did a good job. Um, I already showed you, you know, the, how well it cuts paper. Uh, this thing's great for slicing through an apple. It actually slices through instead of, you know, forcing its way through and breaking it. Um, it's a very, very nice knife. If you can carry a knife this size, I highly recommend it, except for the opening. I really wish I could give this thing the highest recommendation possible. And, uh, Maybe after I do this adjustment, I might just be able to do that, but then it's going to be a modified knife instead of a factory edge, a factory uh, production recommendation. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching my video. Thank you for being subscribers. We're coming almost at the end of the month, and uh, so we're... <laughs> I don't know why the end of the month just is exciting time for me for no logical, real good reason, but it just is. Um, we've got, uh, I've got a son getting married soon and I've got a niece getting married soon and, uh, Easter weekends next weekend. And, uh, my wife wants to do some painting and stuff. So I might have some less videos coming out soon. Who knows? I might be able to catch up and get a whole bunch banked for you guys. I don't know. But if my videos start slowing down in a little while for a while, that's what's going on. My life is just getting busy right now for a couple months. I do thank you for watching. Thank you for checking out my other channel. At the end of the video, you will see a link to my other channel right where my thumb is right here. It'll have the letter G in the little circle. That's goods, gadgets, and gear if you're interested in anything else that I might be reviewing. Over there, I review just about anything and everything that's not a knife or a flashlight. All kinds of things I review over there. Thanks for checking that out. Thank you especially to my Patreon supporters. Uh, remember, if you are a Patreon supporter, you will have the chance every single month to win a knife from this channel, a knife that I've reviewed. And it won't be the cheapest knife that I reviewed either. It's going to be a good knife. So if you want to be a Patreon supporter, there'll be links down in the bottom. Thanks to everybody. Thanks. You guys are awesome. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.